thought I'd um, begin with the, my part of the collaboration with Robert Shepard, uh, which goes as follows. What we did, we were commissioned by Stephen Fowler to work together. Um, I wrote the first poem and then we wrote successive poems, alternate poems. So it began with the following, uh, all road ever. This boy stood on the floating dock, grew up in the bombed back streets of Bootle, rejected the routine of the factory, stumbled bleeding into the Cardoma, the decline from Duke Street to Wavertree, the postman's round from Salisbury Street, enforced diaspora to high-rise blocks, never to know home and landfall again. To which Robert responded with a poem called The Hippest Man to Walk the Planet, <laughs> which that's good. And I wrote in response, Lost Boys, 1973. In the sandstone shadow of the cathedral, under a moonlit dome, Huskisson meditates all that man is. While wild boys from the cemetery, night walkers with breathless mouths, seek out again the gilded gates of the Philharmonic, the carved stone panels, cut glass screens, and polished brass of the vines. At midnight on the pavement, after reeling from pub to club to cafe, yearn to return to Gambia Terrace for Zappa and Beefheart and Bitches Brew. To which Robert responded with Nightcap with Mark Chagall. <laughs> and I then responded with The Grapes, Walton, 1969. Deckhand, boxer, stagehand, welder. Cleaned the floor at St. Martin's, made his own work from scraps of leftover metal. After a day in the studio, sits in the corner of the snug with his companion, while the company's time and motion man with his clipboard watches the barman emptying ashtrays and the satisfied customer returns with an air gun to improve the decor by shooting the ornaments off the top of the bar. <laughs> Robert responded with one and only The Grapes Chinatown 2013 and I responded to that with the final poem, uh, Lock-in. One stood on the wave-washed deck, one stumbled towards the Blue Angel one glances without reflection in the mirror. Two long glasses brimmed with muscatel to drink from the wine breath. Two worlds between two worlds. Bodies tumble to earth, Byzantine traceries of smelter <coughs> and carter. Capstan man, sailmaker, cotton clerk, summoned at midnight call, as midnight calls. Departures from under the dock, sorry, is this small print that we're complaining about? Departures <laughs> from under the clock to follow the elliptical orbit of the moon through Williamson Square or Edgehill catacombs, features, featureless, fantastical, in mimicry of youth. And the backstory there is that um, Robert has been living and working in Liverpool for the last couple of decades, uh, while I've been living and working in London for a few more decades, but um, originally I was from Liverpool and he was from the South. I'm going to switch to a poem called uh, Le Mistra, which is the Provençal for the Mistral as the wind that blows in Provence. Uh, and this was a holiday a few years ago where I'd set myself to write a, po a poem a day through each of the days we were there. It's called Seven Poems for Ford Maddox Ford because uh, the guidebook we were using was Ford Maddox Ford's book in Provence, which is a little out of date, but it's still... <laughs> <laughs> so, the first one. There were images we couldn't use. Powdered limestone whirled by the wind. Petrarch's glimpse of Laura in the cloister. Hello, Simone, we have a situation. Leave off the gold leaf and those long tapering fingers. International Gothic has arrived. And the proto-humanists are queuing up. One day we'll learn to forgive Galileo. Bankers will surrender their bonuses and ExxonMobil will become a philanthropic organization. But for now, the sun still circles the earth and there are heretics everywhere to be suppressed. Two. Benedict came here in search of security and built a fortress. Clement made it pretty. The bridge was a new way to tax river traffic, so smuggling salt became big business. The building makes the object as the frame is part of the picture. They made their fortune in fashion and gave their collection of paintings to the city. The earth rages against two solid freight cars and a sick green sky with a passion to see beyond the limits of seeing. Three. And everywhere, the spectacle of combat, from gladiator to bullfighter, slim hipped in his suit of lights, blood sinks into the sand of the arena, and the crowd roars. The best seat is reserved for the boss, of course, 
who might and might not miss lunch to witness the killing of criminals or prisoners of war. Presidents stand by flag-draped coffins and try to look serious for the camera. Widows and friends leave brief epitaphs. El Nemeño watches over the waiting rock fans. Hemingway ends with a gun in his mouth. Next. Slamming doors and anonymous feet mark the hours of the hotel night. The wind still whips down from the north, and breakfast gets later every day. What Petrarch got to do with this? Pakistan suffers another attack, and Brown will send another 500 troops. You water a sacristan with your coffee, while the card players play another hand. Neither hot nor cold, ice nor fire, though snow has fallen early over Germany, and Tina Turner returns to taunt us. Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? Who needs to write when the last word isn't spoken? Martha left Mary to move to the country. Balthazar's family followed their star to a rocky kingdom in need of some attention, but with views to the sea. These manibus they committed their dead with the requisite grave goods and stone memorials. Daughter Arvind, Julia his wife, only the essentials. When the end of the world comes, he predicted only this city would survive. Where does they get this sense of regional providence when the wind is strong enough to blow you into the Rhone and the river floods to the first floor windows and the cafe downstairs throbs till 2 a.m.? The farmers are in town and the police have closed the bridge. Epic battles around the base of the mausoleum. We follow the banners and tractors haul apples and carrots into the centre. Olive and vine cling to the windswept soil, green in November, black in January. Pigs and ducks, cheese from sheep and goats, ready for the table for generations. The supermarkets push down prices, villages deserted, vegetables rot in the fields, fruit remains unpicked. We walk through empty streets, shuttered windows, walls unpainted, plaster peeling. And the final one. The tables in the square are deserted, and the carousel is dark and still. We have crossed the border between seasons, and wake in fear and panic in the night. Sighs are not food, tears are not drink. There are five kinds of olive and four kinds of grape. We linger over figs and pears, while the pastries are, really, to die for. And perhaps in the end it comes to this, the trip to the market for bread and cheese, hands held amid slow-paced traffic, a living commitment constantly renewed. And that was a completely different. I thought I'd read the... Um, four sonnets for Sophie. And these were, uh, are dedicated to Sophie Robinson. Uh, and they were, the titles were taken from a, one of her entries on Facebook when she was moving from London to Newcastle. And she was saying that um, it meant goodbye to James and Foxton and various other things that she was saying goodbye to. And I replied back saying, these sound like good titles for poems. And then I thought, actually, they do sound like good titles for poems, so I stole them all. Um, so the first one is called James and Foxton's and begins with an epigraph from Henry James. Her value in the house was just the value, as one, one might say, of a good agent. A provocation, an inspiration. 26 years of planning and seeking at open doors where vistas were long. The vision of the coming surrender. Four iron pots on pedestals painted white to give it the air of a terrace. A place in the deepest depths of Essex. A shallow box guiltless of curve or cornice the plain square hall, one of the few good features. A turbid grey sprigged with silver flowers, so gentle, so human, so feminine. You make things compose in spite of yourself. The hush of the house was at least the same. You can take immediate possession. And all the lines are taken from now uh, towards the point. So it was James as a uh, real estate agent. <laughs> But I then followed up the deed of variation, which is for Walter Benjamin. The damp boredom of post-war Europe, ready to be overrun and occupied, trusting only in E.K. Farben and the peaceful perfection of weaponry. Courtyards, balconies, and stairways, rented space haunted by a nowhere. Poets lynched and publishing houses burned means pessimism all along the line. The steep slope down to the Landwehr Canal, the occult world of business and traders, acts of rebellion and negation experiments with infernal machines in search of the eruptive moment when history seems on your side. Uh, the fourth one was Certificate of Lawfulness. 
Um, and this one's dedicated to Sean Bonney and has the epigraph, Fight Dirty, Life is Real. The fourth year of the Great Depression and a street gang with an analysis resisting arrest, inciting riots. All the secrets learned in the basement, survival codes turned into attack. The jagged momentum of the skirmish, convulsive and confrontational, in a state of undeclared martial law. Nighttime courts and secret witnesses, executions on highways and subways, the corruption distributed throughout gentlemen's clubs and executive boards, the cocktail hour and the pre-theater drink. It won't be their kids that get sent down. And then the last one, Indemnity Assurance, was uh, dedicated to George Jackson. Gray black smoke against the daylight sky, unclaimed bodies in the city morgue. The violence of the productive system demands tactics for growth and survival, where growth implies feeding and being fed. First strike translates into advantage. What to do with what we have with death or prison for all who object? The violence of bankers and brokers, cutting wages, increasing the homeless, with undercover cops and surveillance and media ownership of stored control. Who does the work and who does the dying? He's standing in the tank trap he's got. It seemed appropriate to read that this particular period of Manchester. <laughs> <Somehow. laughs> um, I'll do a couple of reworked disasters. Uh, so this was a, a sonic sequence where the titles were taken from it's, uh, so the first one is called Much Have I Travelled for Harry Jolomis. The surface is rugged, limitless clouds above limitless ranges of hills into the killing zone. Every day's weather different, ready for the attack. To endure and to survive, twists and turns, distrust of scholars that soaked his heart through alienated access to centres of knowledge. Top of fees and insult to injury. In the realms of gold is dedicated to Elkie Brooks. Blood on the ground, splintered doors above a grid of streets, security code has been cleared. Rapacities that underlie discovery and desire. Walkie-talkies and luminous safety jackets speed up the transfer of pure oppressive meta-language. Humiliated once too often, the lost and the lonely are more predominant perturbation, overruling wisdom. The next one, and many goodly states, is for Roman Lee. At the end of the shift, carried on a stretcher, heroic and humiliated, spent to all use, a fashion of outward fortitude both severe and audacious, no master save his own invention, crimson smeared on thick arms wrapped around shoulders, little respite from enclosure, emphasizes the corporeal, the image that haunts, the burden of data provision was always enough for buzz. Have I been dedicated to Robert Shepherd? It was his fantasy, not hers. No instrument played while the narrative became lost in the translation. With clowns and puppy dogs, the difference was evident. A, ta a tactic to be used only in an emergency. Both urban and credible, in full fancy dress, a violent alteration within the framework of scholarship, control and boundary in a dialectical relationship with desire. And then next, which wilds in fealty is dedicated to Lee Howard. It was a game between them. Brute force wasn't necessary. Only a succession of pauses which conjured up unspeakable terrors. He mistranslates his sources, locks that foil the painter's power, serious jokers and carnival heads, fingerprint bruising on her arm, localized effects stapled onto new stretchers, homeless in the ruins and war destruction to come. Once more, the wolf pelt approved its efficacy. And I'll skip from there to end with um, a series called Bug Splat. Uh, which was, Bugsplat was, was the code name that was used by the American military for Iraq. <laughs> um, and this is based on, very long way, on the um, Armand Schwann's tablets came into this, but also it's based on the um, epic, whose name I remember by the time I read this. The first one is called The Coming Tablet, sorry, Mr. Tablet. <laughs> There's a prologue, Tablet One. This was the man to whom all things were known, secret things. The coming, Tablet Two. One. None could withstand his arms, sons taken from fathers, wives from husbands. Two. His body was rough with matted hair, 
and void like sandpaper. He knew nothing of civilization, rubbing his crotch, come to destroy. The Dream, Tablet 3. One human of heroic stature, whether or not there was ever such a man. The Journey, Tablet 4. Because of the evil in the land, there must be fighting before the commodities can be shipped. Flat jacket, runway, to secure the perimeter. Untitled, Tablet 5. The army destroys wells, rubble where homes once stood, takes control of what remains of the best agricultural land, curses all the educators, breaks all the taboos. Untitled Tablet 6. We don't have food, we don't have safety, or enough water. Our women cannot walk alone. No one goes out after dark. The Search, Tablet 7. More gaps are being filled each year, restoring the world a lost record of business transactions, conquered by their Semite neighbors, no attempt at integration, as usual, incomplete. Left for dead, no use looking. The Flood, Tablet 8. The catastrophe in the valleys of the great rivers, shocked and awed by the results of their own actions, Ishtar fingers her necklace, will not forget these days. The Return, Fragment 1. Searching for the wind, a dead man walking. The Return, Fragment 2. Ishtar the beautiful, of sorrows, of battles. And then the Death, Tablet 9. For Bush who is fate, for Blair who is keeper of the gate, for Straw the serpent, for Enki and Linky, for Enmul and Ninmul, Nine tablets, two fragments. Mm -hmm.